In this video, I'm going to talk about why I'm always broke. And if you didn't know, yes, I am broke. I live paycheck to paycheck every single month. I'm going to explain to you why and how this happens. Now, I'm living paycheck to paycheck every single month, and I'm actually not worried. In fact, I'm very satisfied with the management of my personal finances. And I know you may be saying, well, Ian, if you're actually broke and you're actually living paycheck to paycheck, how could you possibly be happy and satisfied with your personal finances? And so I'm going to explain my method and my system and why, although I'm living paycheck to paycheck and I've been doing so for a very long time, why I'm still very happy and why I'm not worried about the fact that I live paycheck to paycheck every single month. So stick around to the very end of this video because after hearing about my system and my method and my strategies, believe it or not, maybe you may actually get something from this video and you may want to use the same system for your own personal finances. Now, as always guys, I put a lot of effort into these videos and if you like this type of content, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. I'll really appreciate it. it won't cost you anything. And also be sure to subscribe to the channel with the notifications on. That way you never miss the updates of when I post new videos on this channel. Now you may be saying or wondering, well, Ian, why are you broke and why are you living paycheck to paycheck? And so at the time of making this video, I'm not homeless. I'm not eating out of a trash can. I'm not on the side of the street. I have a job. I have a business. I have this YouTube channel and I have around two other side hustles. And that number is most likely going to grow very soon. Now, you may be saying, well, Ian, that doesn't sound like you're broke or living paycheck to paycheck. That sounds like you're well off or you're fine. But my system and my strategy is actually living paycheck to paycheck. And we're going to break this down. But before we do so, fun fact here that I want to share with you guys is how you can lose or how easy it is to lose around $30,000 per year. And by the way, $30,000 is around the starting salary for most jobs. So all it really takes is for you to spend $82 per day and over a year, you would have lost $30,000. Now you can do the math yourself, 30,000 divided by 365 is 82.19. And that's all you have to spend every single day. And in one year, you'd be down $30,000. So the problem here is if you simply just go out there and you start spending, even if you have a high income, you're going to lose a lot of money. And if we're being honest, nobody likes to lose money, right? I definitely don't like to lose money. Now on the flip side, I also don't like to penny pinch. I don't want to go somewhere where I want to purchase uh, something, just about anything. But then I keep telling myself that, you know, it's $1 over what I think I should pay for it. So I'm not going to get it. Or I go to a restaurant and I'm penny pinching and trying to save 10 cents here and 10 cents there. That is definitely not fun. And I don't actually think that anyone enjoys doing that. Now, if other people tell you that they enjoy penny pinching, I would say that they're lying and that's just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments if you penny pinch and you actually enjoy it. But I just don't get any satisfaction from going anywhere and trying to save a few cents here and a few cents there. So because of this, I came up with a system and this system is really simple. And all this system does is I thought about things that were really important to me financially. And then I decided to put a certain percentage of my income and because my income changes month by month i decided to put a certain percentage off each of these things that were important to me and that way i will satisfy my financial goals and then i can simply spend the rest on my money on just about anything i want so it kind of gives you the flexibility to do like impulsive spending, but it's not in a bad way where you're doing impulsive spending and you're spending money or tapping into money that you could have used for more important things. Now, this is important because I realized that myself and probably even you, we spend things or we spend money on things that we won't remember about next week or next month or next year. And the problem with this is that the things that we're going to remember about next year, generally we're not spending money on those things right Right now or enough money and i saw that as a problem in my life and i had to create a system to fix that issue so with this system i'll spend 50 percent of my income on living expenses and by the way i started out at 50 percent and it's a bit lower right now it's probably closer to 40 percent but the goal was to always keep this at 50 percent or less now living expenses covers just about everything you need to survive on a daily or monthly basis this is going to cover rent if you rent or a mortgage if you own your own home it's going to cover like car insurance uh, fuel or transportation costs maintenance or other travel expenses it's going to cover your internet bill your water bill your electricity bill uh, food clothing miscellaneous purchases whatever those may be 
and it covers the amount of money that you need every single day or every single week or every single month to survive on. And again, the goal was to get this to 50% or less of my income. Now, this also includes business or side hustle expenses, which I try to keep very low because when you combine the entire picture, it's still counted as my income in a sense. Now, if you guys are saying, well, Ian, what about taxes? Well, I currently pay quarterly taxes. So it's not really an issue where I have to be saving money into an account for taxes at the end of the year. Because if you plan this out at the end of the year, you should have satisfied your tax obligations. Or even if you don't, it should not be that far off to the point where you need to start dipping into the other sections of the system or budget to find money to pay taxes. I know a lot of people are big on saving a chunk of money for taxes, but if you actually do this the right way, that won't be an issue. Now, most of the stuff is automated. So for example, my mortgage is automatically deducted from my account. My bills are automatically deducted. And the only thing that isn't automatically deducted is like clothing or food purchases which changes week by week or month by month. So those will have to be manual, but I automate as much as I can. And that way it leaves very little room to mess the system up. Now, aside from that 50%, the strategy has changed a bit. I used to have a certain percentage going into an emergency fund and then another percentage going into investments, but I've already created a fully funded emergency fund, which is just the amount I need to survive on for six months. And so because I did that, I actually stopped contributing to that emergency fund and it just sits there. And so I'm currently investing around 25% of my income every single month. Now, this is a really important goal for me. And by the way, your system may be a bit different because maybe your financial goals are different from mine, but the strategy is gonna be just about the same. Now, one of the things that's really important to me is retiring early. And because of this, I chose the investing route. And this is why I am investing currently around 25% of my income every single month. And even if my income increases by a lot, I'll still be investing 25% every single month. Now, again, this is automated. This money is pulled from my checking account on a weekly basis and automatically invested. And by the way, there's no room for error when you do this. So I can't get my hands on this money and mess my system up. Now, luckily for me, I don't have any debt. And by the way, guys, when I say luck, I mean preparation meeting opportunity. I was working three jobs when I just got to America. And the main purpose of working these three jobs wasn't to try to overwork or outwork anyone else, but I just didn't want to take on any debt. I wanted to pay cash for a car. I wanted to pay cash just for about anything I would need. I wanted to stay out of credit card debt because it comes with very high interest and I didn't want to pile on that massive debt on myself and then within three to four years, it becoming a burden to pay that debt off. So if you have that, then this will definitely be a part of the system where you contribute a certain percentage of your income uh, towards paying off that debt. But luckily for me, I've been able to maintain a debt-free lifestyle. And the only debt that I currently have is a mortgage. So my system now has two more parts. 10% of my income goes into a savings account and I use that money to fund my entrepreneurial ideas. So for example, let's say I went somewhere and I saw this cool business idea and I came back to Florida or wherever I lived and I realized that no one was doing it. To test this out, I would need money. Now, I don't want to have to go to borrow money from my friends or family or to the bank every time I have an idea on how to make some more money. And so I keep a small fund where I can pull money from to try new business ideas, whether this is an online or an offline business idea. Now, I'll be completely honest with you guys. Most of the money is wasted. And I don't expect to see it ever again because if we're keeping it 100, and I always do, most of the business ideas I try, they usually fail. And at least even if they don't fail after trying them, I realize that it's just not something that I want to invest more money or more time or both more money or more time into. And I pull out, but still this works really well for me because this is how I got my side gigs up and running. And I want to keep this going. So every single month I contribute around 10% of my income to that small fund. And whenever I have some good ideas, I can pull money from that and I can go fund my idea and see where that idea takes me. Now, the final 15% of my money is money that I literally spend on anything. This is money where if I'm walking down the road and I see someone selling, I don't know, let's say pina colada, and I just feel like drinking pina colada right then and there, I'm just gonna buy it whether it costs $5 or $25. And I know you may be saying, well, Ian, 
why don't you invest 10% more of your money every single month and then spend 5% on anything you want? Or why don't you scale it down and only have 1% of your income to spend on anything you want? And here's the thing that I realized after about two years or probably three years of penny pinching and being extremely frugal. It's very unrewarding. I've watched countless videos and read countless articles from bloggers and YouTubers that will tell you that penny pinching is fun, it's exciting, they have the best time of their lives, and it's never been fun to me. In fact, instead of penny pinching, I would rather work twice as hard, double hours, double jobs, just to make double the money so I can spend more money on things that I like or that I want to do. So for that reason, I don't penny pinch and I can't see myself ever going back to that. Now, whether you guys agree with my idea or my system or not, this system actually works for me because I automate everything and I have a fixed percentage of my income going into everything that is actually important to me. Now, because of this, I am actually currently living paycheck to paycheck meaning that when I get paid or when the money comes in, it goes out and I'm on a tight budget. And really, I don't have a lot of room to do anything crazy outside of what I budgeted for. So for that reason, I consider myself broke and living paycheck to paycheck. And even though this is the case, I'm still quite happy. I'm not worried about it because I know that my money is going exactly where I want it to go. So the point here is that you can be living paycheck to paycheck and still have a happy life because living paycheck to paycheck doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. And of course, living paycheck to paycheck could be bad if you're struggling and if you're just barely meeting the bare minimum to take care of yourself. If you actually have your money going to where you wanted it to go, then living paycheck to paycheck is not such a bad thing. So with that said, I want you guys to comment below and tell me what you think about my system. If you were me, would you tweak anything with the system? Would you invest more money? Would you spend more money? Would you save more money? What would you do differently? And also let me know if this is a strategy that you might just end up copying and doing yourself. Now, if you ever want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, you can find me on Instagram. The link is down below in the description. And I hope you guys found some value in this content. If so, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. I'll really appreciate it. Also, subscribe if you haven't already done so. With are notifications on, that way you never miss the updates of when I post new videos. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. All the best with your personal finances. And I'll see you guys very soon in the next one.